Got a little Chris Broussard throat there going. Over the course of 20 years, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick created one of the greatest dynasties in sports. And then it ended. Just like that. Seth Wickersham did a deep dive on that incredible run in his new book, It's Better to Be Feared, The New England Patriots Dynasty and the Pursuit of Greatness. It'll be released nationally on October 12th. And Seth joins us now. Seth, good morning to you. How are you guys doing? We, we are good. Hey, it's great to have you with us. We, uh, we have a lot we want to get to. So this book, I would imagine, years in the making, I would imagine there's a lot that nobody's heard yet, a lot that will surprise us. What surprised you most as you did your, your interviews and your research putting this together? Yeah, so I've worked at ESPN for 20 years, and basically my entire career there, the New England Patriots have been, you know, the most dominant team in professional sports. And so a lot of the book is is just work that I've done over the years with Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. And then there was a lot of work in the past couple of years that was specifically for the book. And I think that what I was trying to get at was, you know, what are the essential ingredients that made these two men, Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, so great at what they did and then I tried to look at the cost of that greatness also. And, um, you know, I had a great time doing it. These are two fascinating subjects. It's going to be a great game on Sunday. And um, I really enjoyed the process. All right, Seth, before I get to my question, I just want to say something to you and to the audience. You wrote a story about three and a half years ago that could you know, almost serve as the preamble to this book. And after you wrote it, you were... Uh, kind of savagely attacked in some corners as just making stuff up, as not knowing what you were talking about. And you have been vindicated on a level that I can't remember a sports journalist being vindicated on by everything that's played out since then. And I don't think many of those people have said, hey, my bad for calling you a phony and fake news. So, you know, so congratulations <laughs> to you on that. And I, and I hope more people that attacked you for it say that because they're all asking to interview you now. And I don't know if they're going back and saying, yeah, and I was wrong about all that. Now <laughs> on, the, on the Brady-Belichick breakup, we have heard Tom wanted, you know, wanted more say. Tom wanted more weapons. Tom wanted to be loved more. I'm sure all that's true. But if Belichick would have changed nothing other than, yeah, you can have your contract extension till age 45. If everything would have remained the same, except they would have given him the contract he wanted, would Brady have ever left? I think he would still be there. That's a great question. And I do think that you're right. I mean, there's all these ancillary types of reasons why he left. But basically, since that Super Bowl where they beat the Falcons, that that unbelievable comeback, he has not only, you know, publicly stated over and over again his desire to play until he's 45, he's built a business around it. And if after that game, after these two men had won their fifth Super Bowl together and made history, if they had just signed him to a five-year deal right then, so much of this acrimony could have been averted. Because you're right. The contract has hovered over everything. It hovered over that, all the problems that they had in 2017 that I wrote about. And it definitely hovered over the team and Bill and Brady in August of 2019 when they were trying to negotiate a contract. And Brady considered leaving training camp in protest because he was so frustrated over how things were going. They ended up signing what was you know, billed as a two-year deal, but it was technically a one-year deal with a raise that gave Brady an out to be a free agent. And anyone who thought that Tom Brady might remain a New England Patriot and a retire a New England Patriot, you know, had those hopes severely tampered on when he and Giselle announced that they were putting their house up for sale, I think 48 hours after that contract was announced. And he said publicly he knew right then that this was going to be his last year in New England. Seth, you, you alluded to some there, <clears throat> pardon me, that I want to follow up on. You said building a business, and that is a big part of this. Like, it's a, Tom Brady's legacy in the NFL is going to be greatest quarterback ever. His legacy outside of the NFL might be, you know, essentially reversing aging, like what he's trying to build through TB12. There was a point in time where the Patriots were allowing that to happen in concert where Guerrero had, you know, keys to the building, so to speak, maybe literally keys to the building. That then changed. What made, why did that change happen? What made Belichick turn on Guerrero and the access he was providing? Because it seemed like that was a major issue. It was a major issue. And I think that the problem stemmed from the fact that the business that Tom Brady was building 
and that had an office, you know, across the street, basically from Gillette Stadium, um, was at odds with a lot of the things that the, that the New England Patriots doctors were doing. And so there was a lot of players who felt caught in the middle. Do we go to the place where the most powerful quarterback, the most powerful player on the team goes and, you know, buy into those methodologies? Do we listen to the team doctors? And it created a lot of problems. And so Bill Belichick felt the need to make very clear lines. I mean, he had made very clear that Alex Guerrero was not an employee of the New England Patriots. And so he put some restrictions on what, where Alex could be and where he could not be. And, you know, look at Tom Brady now as a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. I mean, he's, he's not only a quarterback, he's a virtual executive. And Alex Guerrero has an office in the building. And Alex Guerrero got a Super Bowl ring. It's hard to imagine that stuff happening in New England. And, um, you know, I think it just speaks to how open the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are to all of these methodologies that Brady has, you know, become um, evangelical about. Um, and in New England, you know, clearly that stuff was never going to happen. It's, it's Bill Belichick's team there. He's run it brilliantly. And I think there was limits to the influence that Tom Brady could have in that building in Foxborough. Seth, uh, was any of Belichick's desire, or if that's too strong of a word, willingness to move on from Tom Brady, motivated by a desire to prove that he could win without Brady? That's a great question, and I think that only he could answer that, and I'm not exactly sure how he would answer it. I think that, look, I, I think that over the years he definitely – had thoughts and he expressed this to coast people, you know, is the only quarterback I'm ever going to have it, it, Tom Brady in my new England Patriots career. He drafted a super bowl caliber replacement in Jimmy Garoppolo. Obviously Brady was playing at such a high level that even though bill probably wanted to switch to Jimmy at some point, he really couldn't do it. And especially with Robert Kraft's loyalty, so tied to Brady. And, you know, now it's interesting. He's kind of getting a third chance and, um, it's a quarterback's game in the NFL. That's that's not news. And, um, you know, with Mac Jones, I think that he's striving for something that's inherently fleeting in the NFL, and that's sustained success. You know, he has, he has so much pride in that team and in his work. There's a lot of head coaches like Bill Walsh, when he retired and he handed the team to George Seifert, he was kind of secretly hoping that team would flop. And instead they go 14 and two and win the Super Bowl. Bill Belichick has way too much pride to walk away from that team whenever he does with it in bad shape. He wants it set up long term um, at the quarterback position so that, you know, I think that when he'd walk away, he'd have a legacy of not only winning Super Bowls, but always making decisions that he felt were in the best interest of the team. Seth, uh, one more question from me. Why? Mm -hmm. oh, look, they've been together 20 years. They have more success than any other coach and player in NFL history. They were the two architects of it. And usually the quarterback is the extension of the coach on the field. Why didn't they develop this great relationship? I get it. You might have fights. You might have differences and disagreements. But you still, I would think, in that situation would have a really great relationship. And why didn't that ever materialize between Brady and Belichick? You know, quarter, successful quarterbacks and successful coaches are extremists within a spectacularly unhealthy profession, as we all know. These guys are extremists <clears throat> among the extremists. And I just think, like, that's only going to last for so long. And they're very different personalities. And, you know, I think Robert Kraft – for the most part, he did a masterful job of trying to keep the band together. That didn't mean it didn't come with managerial challenges at times. You know, in the, in the book, I report about a 2018 meeting where he was in Aspen for a conference and he was down in the hotel talking to some friends and he goes, you know, I really hate to leave this conference. You leave some of the most brilliant minds, you know, you meet some of the most brilliant minds at this conference and I have to go to Detroit to be with the biggest effing a-hole in my life, my head coach. Only he didn't say effing and he didn't say a-hole. And, you know, <laughs> I think that these are big personalities and very driven people and very smart people, and it's difficult. All that said, you know, we talk a lot about Bill Belichick and Tom Brady and how different they are. They have a couple traits that are very similar, and I think that one of them 
is that although they come at it from different directions, they are both optimists and they believe in the power and the potential of the next play and the next game better than anybody else. There's never been anybody in NFL history who's been so good at forgetting what just happened and focusing on the next thing. And I think that's one of the reasons why they've had so much success over the years. Seth, I'm going to the game on Sunday, and obviously I'm interested in like what's happening on the field. I'm also very interested in the pregame. I'm interested in if Brady uh, comes out and talks to Belichick, or do they give each other a handshake, a little pat on the shoulder? I'm fascinated by it. How do you think, looking forward, this plays out as they enter their post-NFL careers? And I'll give you an example. In the NFL, uh, I think, 100, when it was Bill Belichick and Ed Reed, there was so much affection, effusive praise, and real emotional connection for Belichick and Ed Reed, who never played for him. He just loved the guy, and you could see it pouring out of the screen. Now, Belichick and Brady have said nice things about each other. It feels almost like, like, hey, here, here are the talking points when, the person, when you bring up the other person's name. How do you think their relationship moves forward in five, ten years? It's going to be fascinating what happens. I heard someone say the other day that they think that, you know, Bill will come right up and give Brady a hug and they'll do a video tribute and they'll do all these things partially to kind of knock Tom off of his game. I thought that was an interesting little psychological ploy. You know, when Peyton Manning as a Denver Bronco returned to Indianapolis, they did this big video tribute and Peyton started crying during pregame warmups. And Tom Brady is probably going to be so focused and so ready to go and so amped up that doing something like that, hitting him softly, might actually give the Patriots a teeny bit of an edge. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.